Hey everybody, it's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer questions you sit in. We've got a ton of questions to go over today, Angel. So what do you say we get started? Yeah, but before we do, I just wanted to remind you we've got an exciting parenting webinar coming up. Yes. So be sure to watch out for that. Yes, coming soon. Yes. Okay. Joe, what are effective ways to teach my children about forgiveness and grace? My daughter is harboring resentment towards my ex-husband due to his behavior. I've forgiven him and don't talk back about him around her. My main concern is that she seems to be constantly distancing herself from the relationships in life. I'm sure she doesn't want to get hurt by someone close to her again, but I don't know how to help. Um, having been through divorce with a daughter. Yes. Who was very wounded by her father. Yes. He went on to uh, help raise two other little girls and kind of didn't send anything for birthdays, acknowledge Christmas or anything. Just disappeared for, for, for several years. For several years, trying to make it up now. But there was a big gap. And I remember when she was 13, I couldn't find her. And we lived in a little apartment. So I was like, where is she? And uh, finally found her in her closet crying about her dad. And I said, sweetie, we had gone to counseling together through the divorce. But I realized that. She needed some counseling one-on-one. Yep. -on -one. And um, and it affected my son different than it did my daughter. Both were very deep wounds. And uh, that I still see remnants of today. Um, but it's gotten a lot better. But uh, so she said. Well, one thing, you weren't a normal family. I mean, you were a, a very famous family. Everybody just in the community didn't know. Everybody in the state knew. Everybody pretty much in the country knew who you were. It wasn't a normal deal. It it could hurt deep. I mean, you weren't just normal. You were. Yeah, you but were, my, my children didn't care about that. I mean, yeah. that was true. And there was a lot that went along with that. Yeah. But but because uh, it definitely changed our lifestyle. Yeah. But but uh, but, you know, the loss of the family. I remember when we told my kids, uh, I can remember my son said, you said that we would always stick together. And that those words just oof, yeah. haunted me. So I'm sorry, got an animal over here that's driving me crazy. <laughs> Probably going to have to move it in just a minute. But anyway, um, so uh, anyway, she said, would you go to the first counseling meeting with me? And I'd known the counselor for years. He was from our church. And and so we went in and uh, uh, he said, well, we sat down and he said, what are you ladies here for? And I started crying. <laughs> It's not funny. I'm sorry. It's not and funny. She looked over at me like, I thought we were here for me. And I'm like, I guess I have an <laughs> issues too. <laughs> I'm sorry. But mom, I would tell you, if it's like that, your, your daughter needs help. She needs professional help. Um, it, it's, it is beyond something that we could, we could hit in a, just a few minutes of the podcast. And, and, you know, we used to feel like in our, my generation that there was shame in counseling. Yes. I've come to the conclusion, I've kind of flipped, that I can't think of anybody that doesn't need counseling at some point. Um, that's true. But, uh, and because sometimes it's just good to have someone that's an objective, uh, it's not from your background and all, that can just give insight. Not a family member. Yeah, that can give insight. Yeah. And they have, they're, they're, they're trained to do so. Yeah. And uh, now... Nowadays, you can do it online. Yes. I know. Uh, my daughter, again, she got married. The little, little, some more stuff came up. And she's a teacher now. And she did online counseling. And she just loved it. It just really changed her. It, it kinda, helped a lot. It kind of closed the book on all of that. Yeah. So um, uh, I would highly encourage you to do that. We did it at our church, started out. But nowadays, you can do it uh, online and everything else. Because that root of bitterness... And that withdrawal will affect every relationship every she has time. moving forward yeah. because that has become her filter. Yeah. And you do not want that to remain her filter. Nope. You want to help her get past that so that she can go on and have wonderful, healthy uh, relationships that will thrive. So I just really, really encourage you to do that and pray for her. You know, um, um, going through a divorce, divorce, I mean, uh, Somebody told me one time, actually a counselor, he said there's stages to grief. And he talked about it, that there's, let's see if I can remember them, there's um, shock, there's denial, there's anger, 
and there's uh there's two more do you remember what the other there's something and moving forward there's one i can't remember but uh he said it'll take about a two-year process and it was almost two years to the day it was weird because it was just a kind of a natural healing process just like god gives us if we have a sore a natural healing process yes. it's not a we want it to be a bling and it's not going to be that chances are Occasionally, it can be. God does that. But well, the, the divorce is worse than somebody dying. It really is. Because they're still here. There's a reason God hates it. Yes. There's a reason God hates it. But uh, God's a miracle working God. He can restore. There's been a lot of people in the Bible went through horrible times, but God brought them out. That's why those stories are in there. God's a redeemer. He can restore what you've lost. Make you stronger than ever. Make you better than you were before. That's the kind of God we serve. And for you, mom, I would say now, you know, what changes about divorce and the reason God hates it, I believe, is because no matter what happens, when my children have babies and they have Christmas every holiday. Now, not only do we have to consider in-laws, now we have to consider the other parents. Family. Yeah. So there's just all of these dynamics. So I try really hard, really hard to be considerate of that. And to say, what is it that you guys have planned for Christmas? What do you have planned for Thanksgiving? Yep. And then when they tell me, then I'll say, will this work for you? Because I don't want to be that parent that demands and say, like I just said to my kids the other day, what are you planning on doing for the 4th of July? And they said, well, I we don't really know. We're thinking about going to see dad. And so if that's what your plans are, good. I hope you enjoy it. Yep. And maybe I can see you later that week. Or so, I mean, that's not a huge holiday for me, but I mean, I, I, of course, it is for me as an American. Don't get me wrong. I love the 4th of July. But as far as celebrating with my family. Yes. Um, but um, but so I think you have to be very gracious and go bend over backwards to, to, to be gracious and say, I'm not going to put that pressure on this kid. For too many times as they grew up, they've had to make concessions and to try to make everybody happy. And yeah. I don't want my adult kids feeling that. No. Nope. And so... Fortunately, and this is a sad fortunate, but it w almost helped that my ex-husband stepped out of their lives in a way, in, in the sense that they weren't pulled back and forth. Yeah. And uh, I remember my nephew said years before I got a divorce, he, he, his parents were divorced, and he said, did Sumner, my, that's my son's name, go to and fro? And I said, I don't, I don't know what you mean, honey. And uh, he said, I, I go to and fro. And I just, that broke my heart when he said that. And so you have to take into consideration as hard as it is for you, it's 50 times harder for them. Yeah. And so uh, for me, and I don't think I'm a big martyr. It was a choice I made and I loved it. It was the best choice I could have made. I, I just focused on them for 12 years. And I, I mean, I worked and I did stuff like that, but I didn't date. I didn't have much of a social life. It was just them. They were my world. Yeah. And, um, so because I felt like they had to know that they were vitally important to somebody, that they weren't tossed aside along with the marriage. So, Mom, that's a very serious issue. And I encourage you to take very serious consideration to what I'm saying. Yep. God has a, God has a solution. He does. He's not leaving you there. He does. And my kids are thriving today. Very well they're, thriving. They're, they're great. And they both are happily, happily married which, you know, was a big concern of mine. Both are working very hard to establish relationships with their father again. They are. They, and their dad is working hard yeah, at it. Yeah, everybody's and, working. Yeah, and it's all it's all good. We've actually had dinner a couple yeah, times together, yeah. all of us. And yeah. it's, you know, it's not something I would naturally choose <laughs> to do. But, but you know it's what? It's working. For peace. It's and working. For, for my children, I'm going to do it. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, just a side note, when... There was one time he came down after the divorce. Now, my son was 13. My daughter was nine. And he bought his new family down and uh, he wanted them to go to to uh, lunch. Now, think about this. Before that, he had come and told them they were getting married. And my little 13 year old son said, this is too fast. He said, well, we want you to come to the wedding. My son said, no, we're not going to the wedding. Now, I didn't prompt that. I wasn't even in on the conversation, didn't know it was happening. And um, so um so it had, this is the first time they're going to meet her and her children. Well, I knew her because I had hired her before on staff. <laughs> There's a good story there. Yeah, that's and, a good uh, TV program. So, so uh, they were going to go to lunch. And my son said, Mom, would you go to lunch with us? And I'm like, oh, 
That is the last thing I want to do. I said that to myself. I didn't say that to him. But I saw the little anxiety in his little eyes. And I said, yes, I will. And so uh, they didn't like it. But I went to lunch and, you know, and, and it so it bridged the gap for my kids. And it was fine. I mean, I had no feelings towards them anymore. It was I was so far past it. But but, you know, this is a point. When you make a choice that affects these innocent kids, yeah. you have to start making choices that are for their best interests. Yes. So I just encourage you on that one. Sorry, I talked so much. on That's that. a great answer. OK, Joe, I'm trying to find ways to teach my children about the importance of serving others and living out their faith through acts of kindness and compassion. I don't want to raise selfish kids. Do you have any tips on how to help steer them in the right direction of being strong enough to be a leader, but humble enough to be a servant? Yes, do it yourself. Mm. They do what you do, not what you say. So like when we went to church, when church, every time the doors open, you know, minute my first kid left her mother's womb four days later, we were in church. We were in church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Sunday night, every training, union, every camp meeting. And I've told this so many times, I think my second daughter asked when Saturday night, Dad, are we going to church tomorrow? I said, what's tomorrow? She said, Sunday. I said, yes, ma'am, we go to church every Sunday. And we would go early. We would stay late. We would usher. We would greet. We would stack chairs, pick up trash, mow the grass at church. Uh, we were serving. This is what we do at church. We're serving. If you're not serving, you're, you're just a spectator. And those are the worst kinds of people to have at church, spectators. They're opinionated. They don't do a thing. Jesus said, if you love me, do something. You know, love is not what you say, it's what you do. For God so loved the world, he did something. He gave his only begotten son. So you do something, they'll watch you. They say, well, what mom did? Well, they're serving, they're helping, they're greeting, they're ushering, they're stacking chairs, they're nice to their neighbor, they're you know, eternal lost dog. You know, they, it's what they do. They're watching everything you do. And they watch what you talk about at night when you go home at the dinner table. They listen to your words, so. Start serving on your own. You don't have to tell them to. They'll just do it. Yeah, you can't drop your kids at your, off at Sunday school and go go to the Waffle House and then come back and get them <laughs> and expect that that's going to you know do something major in their life. It will a portion, but you, your example is the biggest thing that you can do. You know, a church is a family. Yes, it's not a that, that's not that pastor's church. It's yep. our church. That's right, and. uh that's why it's important to tithe because yes. that's our family. Yes. And yes. Uh, um, it's important to be involved because it's our family. This is not a country club. <laughs> yeah. And so it's important to help the church grow yeah. and thrive and reach out. And uh, so be a blessing. Yes. So that's the best answer. Very good. All right. I am finding it hard to have a sense of community and fellowship with other Christian families in our large church. It seems like we go to service and leave and then just come back to do the same thing next week. I really want to connect with families at our church for the benefit of my husband and myself, but also for my children. Do you have any suggestions on how we can do this in such a large setting? Yes, volunteer. I was in a church, uh, my first church I was on staff with had 3,000 people. The second church I was on staff with had 12,000 people. He said, man, I don't like a large church. Well, I do. I love it. It was good. But what'd you do? Well, we were involved in different groups you know your usher you greet you teach sunday school you come early you park cars you know uh we had a lot of guys just volunteered to park cars the parking lot we had guys that drove golf carts to help older people get to the building because there's a long way to walk uh we had people inside that were just giving instructions hey what do we look for the bathrooms are there things are down here classrooms over here and so there's a thousand things you can do at a local church Starting at the ground level, just volunteer somewhere because they need a ton of volunteers. Somebody in that big old church needs you to do something. So what happens, you know, like I was a Sunday school teacher for years. What'd you do? I met other Sunday school teachers. We had little meetings. We had training once a month. We'd get together, drink coffee, eat a hamburger, you know, and we would visit. So when I walked in the building, I don't know 12,000 people, but I know these people because I teach with them. I share with them. I know these people. We've gone out to eat a burger together. We've gone to each one another's house. Why? We have a relationship now. We're not just going into a big crowd. You know, it's not just a big crowd. You got to meet somebody. To do that, you need to volunteer somewhere. So that's the best thing you can do, volunteer. It is true. And even when I was a single mother and I worked uh, full-time and I had two kids, 
I would help a volunteer in the youth group and the nursery, which I have to tell you, that was not my net. That would have never been a place I would have volunteered <laughs> naturally, but my daughter volunteered in there. And so I would volunteer there and my son was singing in the youth group. So I wanted to be involved where they were involved. And so did it, was I tired? Yes. Was it hard? Yes. yes. Did I have to go the extra mile? Yes. yes. <laughs> but it, like, it was worth every minute. Makes you a better Christian. This isn't just a club you belong to. It's going to take some work. All families take work, take manual labor. And otherwise, I would have just gone home and watched TV. And so yep. uh, I would just really, really encourage you to be an example. Yes. As far as also another thing is we go to a large church. And yes. in our church, they have small groups. Yes. Lots so if them. they have small groups, I would try very hard to get involved in some of those. Yes. So because uh, like on our Wednesday night, and I know every church is different, but we have from six to seven, you have a small group. And then from seven to eight, the the pastor that was the retired pastor now does prayer. Yeah. And that's an awesome service. Yes. So, um, and one of the things that's great, when 30 minutes before church starts, the open doors, you go in, the screen's constantly flashing. This group, this group, we like somebody to join this group. We need somebody in this group. Uh, and it's like, it's just opportunities abound, like, you, you got to get involved. Someone's like, you feel bad if you don't sign up for something. Hey, we got to get involved. And those people that reach out the door, there was a day that they were just sitting there too. That's exactly right. <laughs> just ask one of them, how do you get involved? We'd like to get involved. Yeah. And that's how you'll meet people. That is how. And I promise you, pretty soon you'll be more social than you want to be. <laughs> that's true. Hey, we love you guys. We love starting off our week with you every Monday. Don't forget to look out for our uh Webinar. webinar. Come on, our very first kids. It's going to be great. going to be a great webinar. Parents. We love you guys, and we pray a great week for you and your yes. family. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.